In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Well, dear friends, wherever you are at the moment, I join you as your Archbishop on this fourth Sunday of Lent to celebrate Mass in unusual circumstances. But it is the Mass, and we have spiritual communion here, so we're united with the Church and with the Church Universal in the great bonds of faith. So let us now, therefore, dear friends, call to mind our sins during this Lenten season, ask God's forgiveness, and make ourselves ready for the, the Mass that now opens up. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen myself a king among his sons. When Samuel arrived, he caught sight of Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed one stands there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Take no notice of his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. He then asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? He answered, There is still one left, the youngest. He is out looking after the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not sit down to eat until he comes. Jesse had sent for a boy of fresh complexion, with fine eyes and pleasant bearing. The Lord said, Come, anoint him, for this is the one. At this, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him where he stood with his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord seized on David and stayed with him from that day on. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of the light, for the effects of the light are seen in complete goodness and right living and truth. Try to discover what the Lord wants of you. Have nothing to do with the futile works of darkness, but exposing them by contrast. The things which are done in secret are things that people are ashamed even to speak of. But anything exposed by the light will be illuminated and anything illuminated turns into light. That is why it is said, wake up from your sleep, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. He spat on the ground, made a paste with the spittle, put this over the eyes of the blind man and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a name that means sent. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came away with his sight restored. His neighbours and people who earlier had seen him begging said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is the same one. Others said, No, it only looks like him. The man himself said, I am the man. They brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. It had been the Sabbath day when Jesus made the paste and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, He put a paste on my eyes, and I washed, and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself, now that he has opened your eyes? He is a prophet, replied the man. Are you trying to teach us, they replied, and you're a sinner through and through, since you were born. And they drove him away. Jesus heard they had driven him away, and when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, Tell me who he is, so I may believe in him. Jesus said, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and worship Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I believed, said the man, and worshipped Jesus. So in this gospel today on our pilgrimage, Lenten pilgrimage to, uh, to Easter, uh, we are looking at faith. And at the beginning of today's reading, this blind man had no faith. And at the end of the reading, he had strong faith and partial faith in the middle. On the other hand, the people who were supposed to have all the faith, the uh, intellectuals, the academics, the, as it were, the professionals, religious, they started off with faith, but at the end they showed they had in fact no faith. It's always interesting to me that God chooses the unlikely ones to bestow the gift of faith. And any arrogance of the heart or any sort of uh, blockage through sinfulness and selfishness, God can't get through. But this poor blind man so marginalised, so much on the periphery, 
God goes out to him. Isn't that a beautiful expression? Clearly, Jesus went to look for him when he was under pressure from the leaders. And seeing him, he gave even a deeper faith. So everybody, you and I, our faith has been tested. This coronavirus is really upsetting us. People are frightened. People have a sense of panic. All that shopping we're doing. And that means it's only symptomatic of our mind whirling around and our heart being distracted. No, we come to the Mass and we say to the Lord, we rest in you. We rest on this Sunday. We rest in the resurrection. And focusing our eyes on Jesus, everything else opens up. So let us allow Jesus to do with us what he did with that blind man. On the journey, faith was given Faith was deepened, trust restored, hope celebrated. In our difficult times now, let's have our eyes fixed on Jesus and know that he's bringing us to Easter joy. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, friends, that this our sacrifice and uh, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as, as is fitting for the salvation of the world. We make this prayer through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, St. Therese of Lisieux and her parents, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the power of, the, of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom glory of Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us all the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We might want to offer each other a sign of peace uh, by simply nodding to each other and waving to each other appropriately. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
So just before we finish Mass, let's pause in silence. And those at home, you're receiving now spiritual Holy Communion. Just allow Jesus to come deep within you through this spiritual communion. He loves you. He comes to you. fills you with hope and deep peace and a love and mercy that is beyond all comprehension. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten every one who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendour of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, through this Mass, I hope you have felt the closeness of Jesus and the Church to you in whatever situation you find yourself at the moment. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our mighty God bless and protect you and heal you. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.